안녕하세요. 라이드몬 <웃음> 필립입니다. 나는 캐나다에서 옵니다. 에서 오지만 스웨덴에 세고 에서 옵니다. 감사합니다. 오케이. Okay. Um, I must admit that when I heard that this year's theme for the IMSCC was Leonardo da Vinci, I was very excited because I teach geography and history and I think that we can use a multidisciplinary approach in order to teach technology while using a chronological narrative to encourage kids to understand how each invention respects also a historical progression. So no one else represents this better than Leonardo da Vinci. He is the greatest polymath of all time. By polymath I mean that he developed an expertise not only in art to become one of the greatest painter of all time. He was also an inventor, an architect, an astronomer, a scientist. Yes. Like I said in Korean, uh, my name is Philippe Longchamp. Um, I am from Quebec in Canada, and I moved to Sweden 17 years ago. And I work at Banegul Montessori School of Lund in the southern part of Sweden. Our school is special. We follow the Swedish curriculum, but we teach a lot in French and English. So my students have the privilege to be exposed to French and English on a daily basis. On top of that, you notice that it's a Montessori school. Montessori is Italian, just like Leonardo da Vinci. And um, I'm here to show a bit how I try to integrate 40 frame and active learning in my classes, mostly as a historian and geographer. I also have the privilege to teach technology. So by using a holistic approach, I try to integrate these subjects in the same spirit of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. So there I'm head of department for Hugstadiet, which is basically grade seven to nine. So my students are between the age of 12 and 16 in average. Our school respects the Swedish curriculum, which encourages us to work with a multidisciplinary approach. They call this there. So we try to have different subjects. So I must one more. Sorry. So, like I said before, Leonardo da Vinci is a great source of inspiration. And as a historian, it's great that we can use this chronological approach. But you may ask, how can history and geography teachers like me can integrate these five essential aspects of education while respecting the different curriculums. Well, here I will show how 40 frame can be used as a great pedagogical tool to really enhance the learning of my students. I will um, start by showing how they can, all these subjects overlap. For example, uh, 40 frame is um, a great uh, learning tool. Here we have two students who are working with mechatronics and this is mostly in technology and science. However, how do I use it in history? That's the question. For example, we start with the chronology and of course Leonardo da Vinci embodies the spirit of inquisitiveness and the creative evolutionary process that started more than 200,000 years ago when mankind discovered fire. And also when we learned how to, or when we invented the wheel 5,000 years ago in Mesopotamia. So since then, it's only progress after progress. And indeed, 
The most famous polymath of all time, or during the Renaissance, was a true genius, because he developed an expertise in a multitude of disciplines. And that's why we try to nurture with our students. We want them to become jacks of all trades. We want them to be, become experts in a lot of different things, not only specialize in one aspect. So, I love to use 40 frame as a pedagogical tool with my students, because here, I'll show you, for example, when we talk about the Roman Empire and antiquity, they see pictures like this in books about Roman uh, thread, um, thread wheel crane, sorry. And after seeing a picture like this in a book, well, or hearing me in a lecture, maybe they will remember about 10%, 20% if I'm lucky, about what I say. However, if they have the chance to experiment and build one like this, I'm pretty convinced that they will remember this. It's going to be sustainable learning. They will remember for life. Here's a demonstration quickly. Once the, the students have built their model, they can understand that the Romans were putting people in there to lift these huge blocks to build this magnificent aqueduct system throughout Europe, just like a hamster wheel. So then you can learn to make comparisons as well. Then we go on in a chronological order. When we look at the Middle Ages, of course, one of the greatest invention of the Middle Ages are the windmills. And 40 frame is a great material to build windmills. So the challenge was that each student were encouraged after the lecture to conceptualize and build one that would be put in front of an electric fan. And we were looking at their performance, how well they were catching the wind. Then again, I'm sure the students will remember much more when I ask them in a question in a test, what is one of the most important invention of the Middle Ages? They will all remember this. They really assimilated the knowledge. Here's an example. Here they were not following any instructions. I just asked them to be creative, try, learn by, learn from their mistakes as well. Then we go on. During the Renaissance, the first thing they did, of course, was to build the Da Vinci Bridge without using any 40 frame connectors. So at first I thought they would all fail because it's quite challenging with that type of material, but in the end, they looked at the sketches and they realized that it's logical. And then again, they know more about the Renaissance because of the experiment made after class, after my lecture. So, for those who work better, Da Vinci was still a source of inspiration. They built also a flywheel. And not only in history, I will talk more about history later, but also in geography, in order to learn more about the surrounding world and I mean, Europe first, the seventh graders were encouraged to look at different landscapes from all around the world and try to recreate them with 40 frames. Of course, it's quite simple to recreate the pyramids. It was one of the first things that the students did. But later, they tried to build the Eiffel Tower. They realized very soon that it looked a bit more like Tokyo Tower. So they pre presented their construction as a hybrid between both. Here's the result. And here, another group of students tried to recreate Pisa Tower in Italy. They measured the angle, and their challenge was to try to recreate exactly the, the same same structure. They didn't know that it was built straight and it leaned afterwards. But I thought it was challenging to build it leaning, and that's the result here. I think it's leaning a bit too much. And right now, some students are probably still working on this one. They, have, they took the challenge to build the Atomium from Brussels. Now, what's very interesting with the Swedish curriculum, we try to integrate different subjects together. And together with my colleagues, the music teacher and the maths teacher, we look at what 40 frame can offer us. And then the first thing I did this summer, I ordered eight kits with this little wheel organ from 40 frame. So I sent an email to Mariana, and she sent these great, great tools because we are trying to encourage students to learn about programming 
without using computers. And this offers us a chance to build these little instruments, to use them with xylophone, and then once the students are done with that, we encourage them to build some at different scales, or transform them into drum kits, or... Now we'll demonstrate how this can work, but also in the perspective of development and encouraging creativity, once this is playing in front of an electric fan, it creates a loop. So then we can sample it, we can import it into a music program, and then the students can be creative, adding different layers, different tracks, in order to make a little a short song. So here's the result. First, how they built it and how they programmed their song. It's just a loop, but it encourages, again, their creativity. So this is the programming. Here's the new version. Next time we will program music, you will understand, again, using the active learning approach, how it's made. Of course, design is always great for so the students who work fast, they have time to be creative and they can design new stuff, good old Scandinavian design. Or, of course, mathematical challenges like Tesseract, Hypercubes. But, most importantly, it's great to explain the development of technology and in grade 8, we spend a lot of time talking about the Industrial Revolution. And there, it's going pretty fast. With the invention of the steam engine by James Watt, 40 frame is excellent to conceptualize complex things in a simple way. For example, of course, the invention of the car is, offers us so many possibilities. Students can work and conceptualize pistons, gearbox, crankshaft and drive shafts, like in this example. This is, well, it's an all-wheel drive car because all the wheels are always driving and by just turning this thing at the front, you can use it as an engine to make it move forward. And then there's also the brake, the handbrake, which, when applied, makes the car well, well, move. So, we're just going to go and drive the car. You can also make it move like this, which is a bit faster. It's also working in the reverse. And if you pay attention to this closely, you see that that's turning clockwise and that's turning anti clockwise if we're looking from behind. That is because the prop shaft is turning in one direction and the engine shaft is to, well, turning in the opposite direction. I also like to use a very old uh, film from the 1930s. They're very pedagogical. And I asked my student to recreate this invention, like in this example here, a differential. Seems simple. It's even simpler once you use 40 frame and you assimilate the knowledge in a much more sustainable way. Here's an example. In order to reduce the jerky action caused by wide spaces between the spokes, we will put in more spokes. Further filling in the spaces between the spokes gives steadier, more continuous action. And changing the shape gives firm, constant contact. Now we can make the gears thicker and stronger. And we have differential gears. So after watching this video, I asked my student to recreate this invention and now they understand how it works and you will always remember 
It's not only theory, I'm not only explaining with words or showing a video. They did it and they will remember it. Lastly, 40 frame is great as a tool for team building. Um, for example, here I asked the student to teamwork. I gave them some material with a ping pong ball and the goal was to go from one end to the class to the other without well, following a track. And here is the creation. To conclude, like I said before, with the spirit of learning, learning by doing is much more efficient. And 40 Frame offers us this possibility. And I need to put the emphasis on the fact that, in my opinion, 40 Frame is an outstanding pedagogical tool to enhance most learning experiences. It boosts my student concept acquisition skills, and it's a material that really helps them to assimilate different aspects of what we talk about in different school subjects. Just like I demonstrated now, 40 frame can be a very can have a very positive impact on learning about history, geography, or other topics, because especially the development of technology is easier to understand if you use a historical, chronological timeline. When we look at them as evolutionary leaps, following a chronolo chronological steps, 40 Frame offers an immersive experience in a multidisciplinary education. It can help our students to become versatile, jacks of all trades. And these kinds of people for the future they are the ones who will tackle the challenges of the future. In other words, we wish to nurture real polymaths, like the great Renaissance man that we honor today, Leonardo da Vinci. Come on. Thank you very much again.